but we got to get to class by 930. So again, here we are, February 22nd. Can you believe it? It's almost been a year since we've been working from home. So let's move on to our Pledge of Allegiance, right? And let me see here. Oh, went too fast. Okay, boys and girls, just go with the video. I put your right hand over your heart and let's go. Good job, boys and girls. Now we're going to move over to Ms. Markosian. She'll present the next few slides. Boys and girls, I am so excited to share that we have a very special guest today. Joining us today is our board member, Mr. Scott Schmerelson. And did you know, let's give a little background about Mr. Schmerelson. Let's look at our next slide, Mr. Jimenez. Did you know that Mr. Schmerelson started out as a high school teacher, Spanish teacher originally from the state of Philadelphia? He also worked as a counselor, assistant principal, and a principal. Mr. Schmerelson has worked to improve student achievement, making sure that their test scores improve and the school grounds are better and that parents and students feel welcome at school and they feel safe. So we are so proud to have Mr. Schmerelson joining us this morning. So let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So a little correction there, you know, Philadelphia is a city, city. In the state, and it's not a state. Pennsylvania, do you know Pennsylvania is not a state? It's a commonwealth. Believe it or not, no, we live in the state of California, but Pennsylvania is the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It's sort of like a state, but, but a little bit different. So thank you for that intro and I can do the history lesson too. Thank you. So good morning, good morning everyone. I'm Scott Schmerlson. I am your board member for Board District 3 and I represent 110 schools through 20 communities in the San Fernando Valley, including this wonderful, beautiful Kittred Street Elementary School. Go kangaroos! <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jimenez, for allowing me to join this morning. Let me tell you, parents and students, you have a wonderful principal and a great staff who are working tirelessly every single day to serve you. And I have several updates I'd like to share with you. But first, I want to be sure that you know how to get in touch with my office, okay? That's important. So on the screen, you should be able to see my contact information, my social media handles, and a QR code to sign up for my monthly newsletter. And over the last few months, I've hosted over a dozen events for families on topics ranging from mental health and college application process. Too early for you guys to go to college sign us, but think about it, of course, and to safely prepare a physical return to school. So there are recordings of these webinars and they're archived on my Facebook page in both English and Spanish, and they're still available to view. So uh, listen, everybody, as a district, we've opened over 40 4040 COVID-19 testing sites, including six in the West San Fernando Valley. We offer free tests to our employees and students as well as their household members. So listen, parents, that means everyone in your house is able to be tested for COVID-19 free of charge at the testing center. That means you and the kids and grandma and grandpa, whoever lives in that house are able to be tested for free. And to schedule an appointment, please visit dailypass.lausd.net. Daily Pass is one word, dailypass.lausd.net. And LAUSD has also worked towards opening up vaccination centers at select schools across the district. And listen, at the end of January, the County Board of Supervisors signaled their support for partnering with us the school district to disseminate the vaccine. And I am happy to announce that last week, 
the Moderna vaccine was administered, administered by the LA Unified School Nurses and other healthcare professionals at the Roy Ball Learning Center. And Roy Ball is uh, in downtown. It's kind of close to Bowdry. So vaccines are available to school staff 65 and older and other employees working at the COVID testing sites and the vaccination sites in accordance with the LA County Department of Public Health. March 1st, coming up on March 1st, we will be in partnership with the Rams, Anthem Blue Cross and Cedar sinai and we will begin the effort to vaccinate educators and school staff from public and private schools in LA County. Great, great news. This is a coordinated effort so that all in the education community may be vaccinated. Speaking of vaccinations, I recently interviewed a wonderful doctor. Her name is Dr. Eloisa Gonzalez. She is a physician with the LA County uh, Board of Public Health where she dispels these myths regarding COVID-19 vaccination. And this interview about these myths about the vaccination is posted on my Facebook page. So I encourage you to view it. And it's in English and Spanish, by the way. So I also wanna remind you parents that LAUSD operates over 60 grab and go centers across the city, including 17 in the San Fernando Valley. And the closest one to you guys, I believe, is at Mulholland Middle School, which is at you know, Van Owen near, um, oh, Van Owen. I'm trying to think where it's near, uh, getting close to Balboa, yeah. So you can go there driving, you can walk up, whatever you wanna do, and you don't need ID. Three meals are given every day to every person with additional meals on the Fridays to help you with the weekend, okay? And since this message began, I don't know if you're gonna believe me, but it's the truth. LAUSD has served over 106 million meals, 106 million meals to our communities. And uh, listen, do you know that this month is also National Children's Dental Health Month? Well, it is. And this past February 10th, I had the opportunity to demonstrate how to take care of our teeth with the help of Billy the dog. Billy the dog has beautiful teeth and the tooth fairy. So I encourage you to look at the video and remember students, brush your teeth twice a day and floss at night. And Tammy will put a list of dental providers in the chat box as well as the video link. Lastly, the LA Public Library, and I know there's one near you. I think it's uh, right on uh, Van Owen near um, Laurel Canyon. There's a library and they're offering free online tutoring for K to 12 students. One-to-one -one tutoring is available every day, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. So this is it folks. You're always welcome to reach out to my office and Tammy will put the contact information and other helpful links in the chat box. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Jimenez. Thank you for allowing me to be here with you and your families. And remember, I live near you. This is my school. This is my neighborhood. So when I go out on my bike for exercise, I ride around your school and I look for any possible damage and I report it right away to the district. So I'm watching your school on my bike. Thank you, everybody. Have a good morning. Very much. Yes, and boys and girls also, the testing center nearest to us is Madison Middle School. You probably have brothers and sisters that go there. Um, so you know exactly where it is. You can actually walk there to Madison and get your free test, like Mr. Smearson said. Again, thank you very much. We're gonna move on with our slides. I know, cause we got 20 more minutes to go, right? We got to okay, cover. okay, I'm listening. Yes, go ahead. All right, Ms. Marcos, I think you're back on, right? Or is it me? I can't remember. Let me okay, look at my... Let's talk about pillars of character, boys and girls. This month, we continue to focus on the pillar of trustworthiness. So what does that mean to you? Let's go ahead and take a look. So trustworthiness, here are some traits. Someone who is trustworthy, they show it with their words. They are honest, 
they do not tell lies and they do not uh, spread gossip. So uh, they're also role models. We, they walk the walk. They are consistent uh, with their word and with their actions. So we can count on them to be the same person no matter who's around, whether they're in the classroom in front of their teacher or they're outside on the yard with their friends or at home with their parents, they are consistent, they are role models and they're truthful. Um, another trait of a trustworthy person is um, they, they, want, they treat others the way they wanna be treated. Um, they are trustworthy with their heart. They're not judgmental or the, and they don't mistreat people. They're also dependable. They do what they say they will do. People can count on them. Now, let's go ahead uh, and look at this slide. Uh, did you know that last week was President's Day? And one of our presidents, boys and girls, uh, Abraham Lincoln was known as Honest Abe. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was our 16th president. And uh, he actually earned this nickname um, when he was a young man. One time um, he had mistakenly taken some extra, six extra cents from a customer when he worked as a clerk. That night, the story goes, he walked three miles to return the money. So think about that. It doesn't seem like a lot, but he wanted to do the right thing. He was honest. When Lincoln was president, he always told his generals the truth. And uh, he, he, he told them what he appreciated and did not appreciate about them. They respected him for the, his honesty, okay? Now, uh, something else about uh, Abraham Lincoln is people recognized his honesty and often asked him to judge or mediate contests, arguments, and dis disagreements. They knew that if Abraham Lincoln was involved, he would always say what is right. He would not just cite, cite with his friends or people that he liked, he, he would do what was right. He would do the noble thing. So think about how honesty is connected to trustworthiness. Honesty is what you do and trustworthiness is how people how we treat you. So think about who you wanna be and how you wanna be perceived. So let's go on and see what honest, trustworthiness means to some of our students in room 28. Okay, we have oh, Valeria. I I, my, I, my captions covering her name. All right, so for Valeria, trustworthy means a person means a, a person who can trust. They tell the truth and do not steal from other people. That person also has to be kind to you and to other people. They also help you and are always there for you. They also have to respect you and others. Thank you, Valeria. So our next student is, which I can't read, is Iris Jimenez. Um, so she's, this is what she said. An example of trustworthiness is someone who you can trust and someone who is honest with you. Someone who will not share your secrets. You know, you, a lot of times you tell your friends your secrets and you hope that they're trustworthy and they don't share those secrets. So that's what trustworthy is for Iris Jimenez. So let's move on to the next student. And this is by Brittany. Tr trustworthiness. Trustworthy is when you find something that is not yours and you give it back, even if you like it. Okay, and the last student is by Alexis Burrell. Being trustworthy means when you can be completely trusted by someone. Let's say that your friend told you a secret. Now, a secret is a secret. You shouldn't tell anyone unless she allows you to. If you tell someone else, a friend's secret, you are not trustworthy. But if you keep it to yourself, you are trustworthy. Thank you, boys and girls from Room 28. Those are some good examples. And, and it looks like you're learning these, these great traits and this character, because a lot of that, uh, a lot of these traits really mean a lot in, in the future when you become adults. So let's move on to Ms. Markosian. She's gonna present them. So we know that um, February is Black History Month, and over the course of the month, we have been learning about um, African Americans and uh, Black individuals who have really contributed to society. Today, we focus on two strong women who have made a difference in the lives of many. Uh, the first person 
that we will be looking at is Mae Jamison. Next slide, please. Oh, Harriet Tubman. Let's start with Harriet Tubman. So here we go. Okay, so Harriet Tubman, uh, why is she important in our history? Did you know that Harriet Tubman was born into slavery? She escaped slavery and helped others escape as well. Uh, she was a very trustworthy person. People really trusted her plan and th their lives uh, with her. So um, let's go ahead and learn a little bit about Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman escaped from slavery. She vowed she would fight to free all slaves. Her perseverance inspired Americans to stand up for equality. Harriet Tubman, written by Marion Dane Bauer, illustrated by Tammy Lyon. Harriet Tubman was born in the United States of America. She was born a slave. Her parents were slaves. Her brothers and sisters were slaves. To be a slave meant that someone else owned you. That person can make you work very, very hard. That person could even sell you like a sack of potatoes. Harriet didn't want to be a slave. She wanted she to wanted be free. When Harriet was grown, she ran away from the South where she had always lived. She traveled at night following the North Star. She trudged through woods and swamps. Some good people helped her reach the North where no one was allowed to own slaves. At last, she was free. But her parents and her brothers and her sisters were still slaves. So Harriet made the dangerous journey to the South again. She brought her sister and her sister's two children back north with her. She traveled south many times, always hiding, always moving at night. She brought hundreds of slaves to freedom. She brought her brothers and her parents too. Then in 1861, the North went to war with the South. Harriet became a nurse, a cook, and a spy. She even led troops to rescue more slaves. When the Civil War ended and the slaves were freed, Harriet worked for rights for women, all women. She also set up a home for old and poor black people. She brought her parents to live there. Harriet Tubman was born a slave, but she didn't stay a slave. She became a proud, strong, free woman. Harriet Tubman is an American hero. Harriet Tubman is an American Okay, so the next person that uh, we want to highlight this today is Mae Jamison. Uh, Mae Jamison attended Stanford University, which is here in California. Uh, and did you know that Mae Jamison, be besides being an astronaut, she was also a doctor and a dancer? So for those of you who are not sure what you want to do in your lives and you have many dreams and aspirations, you can be multiple, you can have multiple careers and multiple jobs. So it's always important to follow your dream just like May did. Uh, May also worked for the Center for Disease Control, helping with research for vaccines. So let's go ahead and look at a quick interview with May Jameson. 
Hi, Dr. Jemison. Hi, Dr. Jemison. Hello, Hello Dr. Dr. Jemison. Three, two, one. Blast off! Go space, go space, go, go, go space. I grew up during the 1960s and the United States didn't have women astronauts. There were no people of color in the astronaut program. I just assumed I would go up. Why did you want to be an astronaut when other women were doing it? Because I wanted to go into space. <laughs> it's really quite simple. So that was one of the jobs I could do. I just wanted to be a scientist. I wanted to learn about the world. And I always assumed I'd go into space. Now my question for you is, what did you do to become an astronaut? Bye! Being an astronaut, you have lots of different things to do. You have to take, learn how to do photography. You have to learn geology and geography. You have to learn how all the systems work. You learn how to fly. So it's this really varied job. We learn scuba diving. So it's very physical. And at the same time, it has a lot of intellectual components. What is it like to be looking at the universe knowing it never ends? I want you to do something for me. I want you to go outside and look up. Because you're looking into space and infinity. When you're up above the Earth's atmosphere, there's a little less light pollution, and so you see the, see the stars more abundantly. But remember, right now, we're on a spaceship. I felt connected Hi, with infinity. I connect, felt connected with the entire universe when I was in space. And I feel that connection now. And I hope one day you'll look up and do that as well. Hi, Dr. Jemison. Hi, Dr. Jemison. Hello. Hello. All right, are you ready for our weekly attendance awards? So it's been two weeks since we last celebrated the classes with the best attendance. So we will be looking at the classes that had the best attendance in each grade level for the last two weeks. So without further ado, let's get started. Starting in pre-K and kindergarten, drum roll please. Miss Nichols class had the best attendance in kindergarten. The winner is Ms. Vardanian's class with 100% attendance. Congratulations. Who's taking the trophy in first grade? Let's take a look. Mr. Daftian's class, congratulations on having the best attendance. What about in second grade? Who's taking the trophy this week? Mr. Martinez's class, congratulations students in 25. What about in third grade? It was very close, boys and girls. And the winner is two-way tie between Ms. Danellian's class and Ms. D's class. Great job. What about in fourth grade? Who's taking the trophy this week? Mr. Capel students, congratulations. And finally in fifth grade, who takes the trophy this time? Ms. DeMond's class, congratulations, boys and girls. Now we had many classes this time around who had 10 days of perfect attendance. And these are the students who will be getting extra goodies with their next pickup. We have room three, Ms. Gutierrez's class, room five, Ms. Nichols' class, room 15, Ms. Vardanian's class, room 38, Ms. Cole's class, and room 35, Ms. DeMond's class. Keep up the good work, boys and girls, and we will be getting the prizes to you. And finally, we have some reminders for you about COVID-19 safety. Boys and girls, you know that in order to continue to be safe, wearing a mask is so important. You know, when you're outside of your house, even if it's to quickly go out and run a, a quick errand or say hello to someone, wear a mask. Remember to stay six feet apart when you're outside. Um, and wash your hands regularly. Washing hands is very important. Put a soap on your hands, uh, rub for about 20 seconds, and then rinse really well and dry it uh, well. Don't rub it on your pants, okay? And if you're going to uh, cough, make sure you do the vampire sneeze where you're coughing into your elbow. And if you must say hello to someone, just remember elbow bump, uh, you don't wanna get too close. It's best to wave 
but if you see your cousins, you know, give them an elbow bump. So these are some ways that you can continue to remain safe. Um, even though um, we're seeing the sun out and uh, you know, some of you are more comfortable to come out with your families, make sure you're following all the safety protocols to protect yourself as well as the people around you. And with that, we wanna wish you a great week of learning, Kittredge Kangaroos. Thank you for joining us and please follow your teacher's instructions uh, for returning to class. Have a wonderful day.